If you've ever gone out and bought a Gunpla because you were stressed out, then today's video is for you. Let's get it. Welcome back to another episode of the Plan with Therapist podcast. Now, for a lot of people, being able to invest in a hobby can be a very exciting experience. Having control over your purchases and knowing which kits you want to pick up to build down the road can be a great way to build a positive association and some excitement down the road for something that you're really interested in. However, there are going to be instances where maybe we don't get to engage in our hobby as much as we would like to, and we use our spending as a means to alleviate some of the anxiety and stress that we feel that normally we get from our building. And while this can temporarily be a beneficial thing because it does make us feel good, it's not a sustainable long-term model and can even develop into a serious issue. So in today's video, I want to talk about why we stress spend, how it becomes a problem, and how to avoid stress spending habits in the future. But before we get into that, I kind of want to address some things that came up in previous comments and some things that come up in these short versions of my video. And that is a lot of the things that I talk about aren't going to be applicable to everybody. And that's just kind of a general rule for all of my videos is that it's not going to be perfectly applicable to 100% of the build population. So if this is something that you doesn't really apply to you, if you have a healthy hobby or you have a healthy relationship with your hobby, great, then it's not for you. But if you're just remotely interested in this, or maybe you know somebody that this could potentially apply to, I think you could stick around and find a lot of good information in this video and maybe some tips and some tricks that can help along the way. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So let's start with why we stress spend. So what happens when we buy something is that we activate a part of our brain called the reward pathway. This part of our brain is very important when it comes to making sure, letting our bodies know that we did something good. And that's by releasing a chemical called dopamine. When that dopamine is released into our bodies, it's the, basically the entire idea of, hey, you did a good thing. Our body feels it, our mind feels it, and we start to remember that good thing. Our brain gets stronger and it grows because it's something that we actually enjoyed. So when our brain is flooded with this um, feel-good chemical, we alleviate a lot of the stress and anxiety that we may be feeling and bring it down our overall stress levels. So in that case, you know, when it comes to making a purchase, that can be something very beneficial to us because we're starting to feel better. And for a lot of the times, there are individuals who maybe they're going through a lot and they're at a point where they're repressing a lot of feelings and sometimes they'll choose to spend in order to feel something. And in this case, the stress spending isn't so much a alleviation of stress. It is an activation of our emotional centers. It's making us feel something when we don't or when that individual doesn't feel anything at all. And so the question then becomes, if this is something that's good and it's positive, why does it become a problem or how does it become a problem? And this becomes a problem when we rely on the spending to fix our feelings. Our spending strategy or our stress spending becomes a problem. We want to use it to cover up an underlying issue. So we use the spending as a means to temporarily fix our issues. We use it as a means to forget about the problems that are going on throughout our day. Or sometimes we just use it to feel something instead of addressing the underlying issues of what you're going through and addressing a lot of the deep rooted concerns that you might be having. And so as we start to do this, we start to use it as a justification for what we're doing. You know, we're starting to say like, well, I, I didn't get a chance to build. And so this is my quick way of getting a quick, you know, high from engaging with my hobby. And it's not a strong association with the hobby. It's actually pretty weak because we don't even get a chance to really engage with it. We get a quick hit of that feel good chemical and then it kind of goes away because we return to baseline again. That's just normal. That's our chemical processes in our brains. That's just what happens. And so as we start to do this, as we start to use it more and more, eventually what happens is we build up a tolerance, just sort of like how as you drink more coffee, you need a little bit more to get more awake in the daytime. And so we start to develop a tolerance to the feeling that we get when we build a model kit. Yes, we know it starts, we know it makes us feel good. And so we start to chase that a little bit. And in some cases we become, we develop a pattern which becomes an impulse control disorder where we don't quite have control over that spending. It's like we feel like we need to do it and we start to worry if we don't get to do it. And we start to chase that feeling of feeling good, even though it never actually comes. And so this is how stress spending in an attempt to try to alleviate some of our problems develops into an impulse control disorder because ultimately what's happening is we're leaving a lot of our problems unaddressed below the surface. 
And so what ends up happening is now we're having an emotional backlog build up on top of developing an unhealthy relationship with our spending. And now our hobby is not allowing us to feel good because instead of associating it with excitement, we're starting to wonder why we're not feeling good. And we start making negative associations with our hobby. And so the question then becomes, how do we avoid this? How do we avoid falling into this trap? And how do we override our pretty basic wiring when it comes to do something good, our brain lets us know we did good. And so honestly, the funniest way is in order to avoid stress spending, in order to engage, avoid having to engage in your hobby in this way, the best way to do it is to engage in your hobby the proper way. That means build your kits. And by building your kits and taking the time to sit down and tell yourself to build, it's going to give us the opportunity to actually just get into a zone where we can start to alleviate our stress. I've talked about in many of my videos before how building is a stress reduction model, how we can use it to process a lot of the emotions that come up throughout our day. And by scheduling that into our day, we set ourselves up for a time where we can really control something and in an opportunity where maybe when everything else in our lives is out of our control. And so building our kits gives us that opportunity to relieve those stress levels, right? So we don't feel the need to alleviate anxiety with purchases. At the same time, if we're not feeling anything, getting ourselves to sit down at a table, being effortful about taking some time to build can start to make us feel like, hey, I am capable of building, even though I don't feel like it. And I could start to associate that with things I want to do in life. Well, I don't feel like building, but I got myself to do that. What else can I get myself to do? And we're setting ourselves up for this pattern of thinking of progressivism. We start to think about what else can we do? And just by simply taking our time and forcing ourselves to come and sit down, even when we don't feel like it, we can start to, again, build a positive association because now we're using it as a motivational tool, we could see what we're capable of at our bench and we can apply it to other parts of our lives. So that's how we can avoid falling into a trap with just simply building model kits. But another thing we can do in order to avoid our stress spending is being aware of potential triggers of that stress spending. Meaning, are you experiencing stress and anxiety at work that is making you want to shop? Can you identify things in your day that triggers that really strong feeling? Are there maybe people at your workplace or people in your life that cause you to have some really strong thoughts and some feelings and have a very visceral emotional reaction that you want it makes you want to shop you start to think about it or maybe you're just like oh that was so stressful i'm gonna go browse um i'm gonna go browse a gunpla website or something like that and so if you are aware of these triggers what you can do is you could take some time to plan up around how you're going to address those things, prepare yourself going into that situation. And then afterwards, if possible, take some time to decomp from it. If you have an opportunity to build or add that to the things that you process during your build time, that can be extremely beneficial as well. But take some time to address those thoughts and feelings before the stressful event happens. It, as it's going on, be aware of how you are feeling so you can make note of it and address it later. And then afterwards, take some time to decomp, take some time to address those feelings. Be open with yourself, accept what you were feeling. I was mad. I was upset. I was frustrated. Accept the feelings that you had and start to work through them. All right. What made me feel that way? Why did I feel that way? Oh, and think about it. Is it a valid feeling? Yes or no. And if it's a valid feeling, be like, okay, I was justified in my feelings. That sucked. But I can either choose to hold on to it or I can choose to let it go. And that's up to you as you go through your build process or as you go through your emotional processing throughout your build times and whatnot. But if all else fails, if you cannot take some time to address your potential triggers before they happen, and you just absolutely have no time to build and to take some time to just sit down and build, the last thing I want you to do is I want you to talk to somebody, find a professional near you that you can talk to about your problems, about your stress, about your anxiety. You know, just because we have stress spent once doesn't mean we can't we can't give up and just say, oh, well, that's it. It's game over, right? We could take some steps to prevent it from happening. Again, if you're having trouble managing your feelings, you know, take some time to think about why that is and find somebody that you can, you can relate to to talk to about that. You know, making a mistake is human. If you stress spend because you had a rough day, it's okay. That's a, that's natural. We make mistakes or we try to do things to make us feel better. That's human. That's what we are doing. That's how we survive. We try to do things that make us feel good. 
But if you do engage in that and you know that it's an unhealthy behavior, I want you to find somebody because it's not about the actions of what we did. It's about learning from it and knowing what we should do in the future. And so with that said, I kind of want to wrap today's video. Spending on our hobby can be a great way to get excited, but when we start to use it as a crutch or we start to use it in place of our hobby, that's when it starts to really become a problem. If we dedicate time to build our kits, we can reduce the stress that we feel and we do reduce the need to um, stress spend overall. It's okay to make a mistake, but make sure that you learn from those mistakes. And if you're really having a hard time, please go talk to somebody about the strong thoughts or feelings that you may be having. It's okay to accept help from other people. It's okay to talk to a mental health professional. My thing about seeking mental health is I always compare it to going to the doctor. When you're feeling sick, you go to the doctor. If you have a toothache, you go to the dentist. If you have a mental health problem, you shove it down, you bottle up, and you never talk about it ever again. Doesn't quite make sense, right? So if you have problems, if you need help, talk about it. Seek help, get help get better, and get back to building. With that said, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you found some value in this video. And remember, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, go do what you love, and I'll see you in the next one.